Hi, I'm Debbie Weiser. I'm a geologist with One Concern, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be speaking with you virtually today at South by Southwest. Today, we're going to be talking about visualizing the resilience divide and about the work that One Concern did with the city of Seattle. So uh, our mission at One Concern is to make disasters less disastrous. And one of the ways that we do that is by uncovering and, and finding our blind spots. One of those is the way that um, disasters have different impacts on various demographic groups. And that inspired the work that we did with the city of Seattle, where we started a partnership in 2018 and we worked together um, with the intention of building lasting resilience and strengthening resilience in the city, including bringing various social inequities to light. So one of the questions that we asked in our work is how different earthquake scenarios impact the city. Another question that we asked are some population groups more likely to be adversely affected than others. And so to answer these two questions, we looked at three different earthquake scenarios, and I'm going to take you through those scenarios on the next slide. But just to set the context a little bit about where they're located. So uh, in 2001, there was a magnitude 6.8 earthquake in Nisqually, which is south of Seattle. There was damage in the city of Seattle. And this is the earthquake that when you ask someone in Seattle who's old enough to remember it, uh, what a damaging earthquake in Seattle is like, this is the thing that comes to mind for them. Uh, and then we simulated two earthquakes. Uh, one of them is on the Cascadia subduction zone. This is the large regional plate boundary that occurs off the west coast of Washington. Um, it's capable of having upwards of a magnitude nine earthquake, which we simulate, uh, and can affect British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. But we focus on the city of Seattle. And then lastly, uh, we look at the potential for a Seattle fault earthquake. This fault runs directly through the city of Seattle, and as you'll see, can be quite damaging. Okay, so uh, these are the three different scenarios that we looked at for our study with the city of Seattle. And the colors kind of give away my punchline. Um, so as you can see, uh, there's a variety of colors here and light blue means that there would be minimal damage, um, maybe even no damage. All the way up to red, which if you walked along a, a street on a block that was colored red on our map, um, you would see many heavily damaged buildings and, and likely many moderately damaged buildings as well. So the earthquake on the left is, that occurred 20 years ago is what people think of um, when they think of a bad earthquake for the city of Seattle, but the images in the center and on the right show a much worse example of earthquakes that could heavily impact the city. So what does that mean in terms of the inequity that we were able to uncover by looking at these different scenarios to answer the questions that we were hoping to address with the city? So the Nisqually scenario on the left, um, the impact from that earthquake showed a slight more adverse impact to the white population and children within the city of Seattle. Um, then in contrast, if you look at the Cascadia earthquake scenario and the Seattle fault scenario, it impacts a much broader group of people. Um, so for the Cascadia scenario, we see um, an 81% uh, negative impact and, and kind of disproportionate impact on the low income community, followed by the Asian community, the black community and the Hispanic community. Then for the Seattle fault scenario, we see the heaviest disproportionate impact to the Black community in Seattle, um, with a negative impact also occurring uh, within the Asian community and the Hispanic community. So as you can see from this slide, uh, the different earthquakes have different impacts on, on various population groups within the city, and they're not just a scaled up version of the damage that was seen in the Nisqually earthquake, which was one of the things that we were trying to uncover with the city. So uh, some of the takeaways that we can uh, gain from, from this investigation, uh, when looking at the Cascadia subduction zone scenario earthquake, um, we saw that low income residents are, are more heavily impacted and would be um, more likely to experience severe damage compared to higher income residents in the city. And then for the Seattle fault scenario, this is a, a very staggering statistic to me. 61% of all black residents in the city would be likely to experience severe damage or live in an area that experienced severe damage. So 
again, these impacts are not um, uniform across earthquakes. They impact different groups differently. And um, it was able to help the city uncover some of the blind spots that they had to uh, how they were viewing earthquakes and how they should plan and prepare for them. Okay, well, thank you for your time. And I hope that you guys enjoy the panel discussion.